Hi, my name is Niri Diaz and I'm a freelance art director and designer working in the motion graphics industry. In this tutorial series, I'll be showing how to make these two images that will be wallpapers for either a phone or a laptop. So for first we'll start with the intro, we'll get a made a brief, we'll think of the idea, mood board, and we'll get going in Cine4D just a few, sp a few things. Then part B and C for each one, we'll be doing uh, both uh, images from scratch in Cine4D, and we'll then finalize it by color grading all of those renders and doing some of the final touches. So the brief, usually when you get the approach for one of these things, you'll be getting a brief. So this is a made up one, uh, but usually you'll have, what's the screen is OLED, maybe the phone colors or the laptop, because it may influence the design. Who's gonna use this phone? What they want from the wallpaper. In this case, let's say, wanted to bring out the texture and the quality of the screen. Uh, they'll give you a general specs for the, the wallpaper, the screen of the phone, let's say. And then there's a design direction. A lot of times they, a few keywords, but also a mood board by themselves. Since we're doing this uh, as a made up exercise, um, we'll get into our own inspiration. But first, I want to show you some projects that I've done. Um, so, for example, I created a wallpaper for HP for one of their laptops. Not that it's a wallpaper per se, but I've also worked on uh, some images for the splash screen for Cine 4D S22. And I've also done a wallpaper for uh, HP again, uh, for one of their earlier laptops. The thing is, a lot. Of, I'm showing this because a lot of the times when you get approached to do wallpapers, uh, they want your style. So the two images that we saw, it, it is relatively my style. It's abstract um, and it, it's, it's me, right? These things that I love. I love using glass. I love using these more abstract shapes. So what's the idea, right? So. First, before I go dive in straight into what I want to do, I always like to have an idea of what's been done out there for either the, the current brand that I'm working with, but also their competitors. So here's some of the images that I collected. Here are some wallpapers for Huawei. Um, really liking this one here with the, how it flows. Uh, it feels like there's movement. Here are some examples from my laptop, from Mac. Uh, from uh, their phone. Uh, I quite enjoy this one with the simplicity uh, and the, the translucency of it. This case with Samsung was interesting, was a much more textual approach. Uh, this one here, we can see that the idea was because of this idea of the folding uh, phone and the opening up. Here, this one is, again, I like the simplicity. Uh, it's interesting to see the colors they use. A lot of times with the, when you're doing for, for uh, laptops, it's, it's a bit more easy in the sense that uh, you don't have going to have that much, uh, always, uh, you know, people are used to having icons and all the stuff. And a lot of times you want bright colors here. I like this one again, simple shapes, but, uh, well balanced and it feels like he has movement to it. And then this one from Windows 11, uh, which is quite simple, but still uh, feels like there's movement to it. So with this in mind, I collected a few images. And I wanted to make, I usually make more than one option. So I wanted to do the same here for this tutorial. And uh, I wanted to want to one that was nature related. I always like that. Uh, but I wanted to create an abstract version of it, right? Not the specific uh, plant. I like this example, for example, due to the glass and translucent material. Uh, but I also like this one, for example, the green one, which is much more simple. I like the materials and conjunctions. And now as I was looking at this, uh, I do use a lot of glass as well in my images. So I thought, why not do one that plays with glass and colors? Maybe something a bit more colorful, um, which we already seen how we, what we're going to make. But these were some of my inspirations for uh, the glass one. I like the movement and, and images on this one, like the shapes. So this was really collecting my thoughts and trying to, to go through what I want to do for these two options. So we'll now, before we go in into creating these images, uh, I want to just quickly uh, talk about a mock-up. The idea is that usually when we get this brief from clients, we also get a model from the phone or an image that we can overlay our tech, our wallpapers just so we can see how they work. So for this case, we're just going to go to this website, mrmockup.com and we can, we actually going to go for one of their, uh, freebies. So this is actually really good, high quality, uh, mockups, but on their freebies, if you search and, uh, 
see what they have. They actually have uh, a phone um, there. So let's go and find that phone. There we go. And I already uh, opened it up, so we're going to go for this one. Again, you can use any other mockup. This is just a suggestion. So let's download it and open it up in Photoshop and uh, see what we can what we have there. So here we are in Photoshop. And uh, here's the, okay, we don't need this uh, layer. And here on the background, okay, I can see it's uh, just an image, a photo, and we have uh, this image. So if we double click on it, we'll go into the, the smart object layer and we can just replace your where it says design. We can then drag our image. So this is great. Again, not the correct specs, specs that we're gonna use, but it will be enough for this. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer and I'm gonna do it as a, a new smart object via copy. Uh, this way it means it's a completely new one. If we just duplicate it, we'll be using the same, it will be linked to the same uh, smart object. Now I wanna create the UI. Again, this is gonna be very loose, uh, but it's just the idea that when we're creating these wallpapers, there's a info that goes on top of it. So we need to be careful how we position things. And as we saw on the mood board, some things have movement. There's sometimes a, a bit of white space uh, and those things are all very important. So I'm going to add here the, um, uh, let's say the clock. Uh, I think that's a, a good, uh, a good thing that all phones have. Just putting some random time. Let's duplicate and let's put the date as well. So let me, again, this font is just a simple font. Put in the date. Let me try make it smaller. Uh, maybe just a hint smaller. All right, I think that will work. And again, let's duplicate and let's add more info. Let's do, for example, the um, weather. Yeah, let's do the weather. So let's do it 22 degrees. And I am also probably want an icon there. Again, just for simple, let's put it sunny, a little a bright circle here. And let's align. Uh, it's a bit big. Let me actually uh, shrink it down a little bit. All right, that should work. Let's now adjust our text. And that looks good. So let's again duplicate it for one last time. And I'm just putting it at the bottom. Uh, and this will be our, uh, let's say, battery percentage. Um, so this should give us enough uh, for us to make it feel like it's real. I'm just going to now center it, make sure that it's aligned. All right, let's save this. And we're just seeing it now because uh, we don't have any image there. It's black. So let me just grab one of the ones that I've already rendered. And because obviously I've done this before, I know that the information is on the top right. So I'm actually going to already flip it to give some breathing space on the top for the text. So let's save it. And here we go. OK, that looks nice. But uh, there's a lot of uh, space on the top, which we don't need. So I'm just going to crop it and uh, have the phone in the center. That's good. So yeah, here we have our uh, mockup that we can use to test our images and then as well to present them at the end. So let's just go and save this, um, this file for using later. Now, getting started with Cine4D. So again, while we're using Cine4D, uh, Redshift, I'm using Cine4D R21 and uh, Redshift is not the latest version. So there may be some changes between what you may use. Photoshop for editing. And then I'm also going to use um, HDRI from Maxim Rocks in one of the the, the wallpapers. Um, the one I'm using it's um, is paid, but you can use any other ones. Um, the one I'm using is this one, uh, the interior um, space. But again, yeah, they offer Maxim Rocks offer some free uh, HDRIs. Uh, or you can use any other, to be fair. Uh, I don't think it will change much the look and the lighting on it. So let's go into setting up our Cine4D scene. Now, this is how my Cine4D looks. Uh, I like to have my uh, Redshift uh, render view at the bottom here on the right side so I can see and preview my, my images. I have all the icons so I can easily access Redshift lights and cameras. On the bottom left, I usually have my materials and here's my object view and attributes. 
in my project I usually keep it at 25 frames per second again we're not really animating here so it's not much uh, important and then for the specs I'm gonna keep it as full HD for this purpose one thing I like to do as well is I like to keep my scenes as organized as I can so for that I like to group things so for that we're gonna create the null I'm gonna call it lights and if if you're just opening it, it will probably be in coordinates and this is closed. So let's go into basic tab icon settings. Let's add a color. Uh, yellow is good for light, sounds good. And I'll add a star. Let's duplicate this. Um, call it geo. So all the geometry will go there. I'll change the color. And I'm also going to change the, to a circle. Oops, change the color back. Okay. So Every time I open a new scene, this is always set up for me. So this is what I get, lights, cameras, geo, and scenes. If you want to have the same where you get uh, this layout and your frames per second the same, you can save this. Uh, so every time uh, you open scene 40, you get this uh, uh, settings. So you just need to find your uh, scene 40 uh, installation um, file, installation, no, sorry, installation folder and just create the new .cine4d. So every time, once you save that into the root folder of your cine4d, you'll be able to, every time you open a new scene, you get those things. All right, now that we're all set, let's uh, dive in into creating each one of these wallpapers.